Hi everyone, this video is about validity and reliability in quant. So with validity, we're asking three main questions. And first of all is, is the study itself valid? And then we are also going to ask, is the analysis valid? And a third question that we can ask is, is the measure valid? This video is going to cover the first two and I have a third vi another video if you want to look at the third question. So with validity and reliability, reliability is consistency. So over here on the left, all of these arrows are hitting the same spot. So they are consistent, therefore reliable. The problem is, is they're not on target, so they're not valid. We want the middle one. We want reliability and consistency and accuracy. We want to be on target and therefore valid. So these are words that are kind of interchangeable in this conversation. Reliability and consistency, and then validity is all about accuracy and on the intended target. Are we doing what we think we're doing? So when it comes to study validity, there's two choices, internal and external validity, and you don't get both. You get one or the other usually, and there is kind of a mid-range where you're kind of doing a little bit of both, um, but you're not doing either well. If you have high internal validity, you actually don't have much generalizability. And vice versa, if we have high external validity, we can generalize, but we're not controlling for every single aspect to try to establish cause and effect. So with internal validity, it's all about causal relationships and this cause and effect idea. So with cause and effect relationships, we could have causal description where we're just describing the relationship in depth. And you can also have causal explanation that really talks through all of the mechanics of the why this causes this. I will say that in social sciences, we don't tend to do cause and effect studies. We do relational studies, but they're not always using this word cause, and here's why. In order to say that A causes B, you first have to establish that A and B exist. Not too hard. And then that they're related. Also, not too hard. Here's what becomes hard. We have to establish that A comes before B and that B never comes before A. That is hard. And then, the worst part is that we have to establish that there is absolutely nothing else that affects that relationship between A and B. And there are so many threats that have to do with all of that relationship and this causes this and this comes before this and there's nothing else that causes and there's, you know, you're after control for every little tiny aspect. And so there's a lot of threats that go into this. I will say that a lot of these um, should be considered for all studies to make sure that it's a good study, it's a solid study, that they are really, really vital in internal validity. So the first one is ambiguous temporal precedence. And this has to do with the A comes before B. And it's really hard and really easy to get stuck in the chicken versus the egg argument. And you have to establish this comes before this and it never happens the vice versa. History is another threat. And what this is saying is that something happened between your pre and your post that now affects your outcome. This could be as simple as you were trying to study engagement in middle school classrooms. And somewhere between the pre and the post, the principal comes in on a rampage and yells at all of the students and says, if you don't listen to this teacher, then you're getting detention. Well, that probably just affected their engagement and therefore your study. Attrition is a problem in most studies, and especially over um, studies that have a long period of time. And this has to do with people just drop out. If you have a really large sample size, then 15% is maybe not a big deal, but if you don't have a huge sample size, 15% could be devastating to your study. Maturation literally means the participants have matured between your pre and your post. <laughs> So if we're trying to understand first grade versus fourth grade performance, is it really the curriculum and the learning and their knowledge has changed? Or is it that they are simply more mature and can focus on the test and focus on their learning? Differential selection is something that everyone should think about, um, but is especially vital if in control and treatment groups. We want our groups to be identical except for the control or the treatment variable. Meaning we have two groups that are completely 100% the same and one of them happens to get treatment and one of them does not get treatment. 
So I want you to pause the video, read the example, and do some brainstorming to see and apply how this would work. I'm serious, pause the video. All right, so now let's talk about external validity. This has to do with generalizing your results. And yes, this starts with a large sample size because we need a good sample in order to generalize to a different group. But really, we're talking about who, what, and when can we generalize to. So there's a bunch of different types that we're going to talk about, and not all of them are going to be appropriate for every study. So you kind of pick and choose what makes sense. Population validity is likely. And this has to do with we are taking a sample of teachers and we are now trying to generalize to all teachers. That might be true, that might not be true. If I have a sample from North Dakota, can that generalize to teachers in California? Those are very different populations. And so depending on what you're studying, it might generalize, but it might not. So really thinking through who are you sampling and who does that match? Ecological validity is sort of similar, but now we're generalizing across settings. So if we find this really amazing treatment that works for our urban students, does it work for suburban students? Does it work for, ur for rural students? How does it work? And if you change the setting, does it still work? This could actually be an entire study, a replication study based on setting. Temporal validity has to do with time. So here we're looking at some sort of a historical aspect and see if we have something that worked in the 50s, does it still work today? If you have a measure that was developed 20 years ago, do you still trust it? Maybe, maybe not. Treatment variation is a really interesting um, validity because we're now saying that if you don't get the full treatment or if there are variations in the treatment, does it still work? Is it still accurate? So for example, if I'm tutoring um, elementary school students and I've established that it works two days a week for eight weeks, great, what if I do one day a week for 15 weeks? Or what if I do three days a week for a whole semester? Or what if a student only gets the first part of the semester and then can't continue? Does the treatment still work? Outcome validity is kind of similar, but here we're looking at variations in the dependent variable. So for example, if I'm looking at college student success, there are a bunch of different ways that I can measure success with college students. It could be as simple as, did they graduate, yes or no? It could be timeliness to graduation. It could be GPA. Um, it could be number of repeats that they had to take, major changes. There's all kinds of different ways to measure student success. And I want to know that does my, um, does my treatment or thing of interest, how does that actually affect all these different things? If I, if I measure GPA and I see an, an effect on GPA, is it the same as timeliness to graduation? Or is the outcome validity different? Does it see, are, does the effect, is the effect seen here, but not another place with a different variable? So again, I want you to pause, consider the example, answer some questions, and see if you can apply it. Like what, which ones of these make sense and which ones do not? So the last thing I'm gonna mention here is the idea of statistical validity, or statistical conclusions. And this question is, is the analysis valid? So here, we're talking about quantitative data, so we're doing some kind, probably, um, of inferential statistic. And so are we making accurate assessments about the variables and how they're related or different from each other? And this comes down to, if you were talking about correlation and then you do a chi-square, that's not valid. <laughs> you need to be using the correct statistical test and then you are need to be interpreting it correctly. So that comes down to what confidence level are you using? Does it, is 95% okay or do you need to be more accurate at 99%? Um, and that determines your alpha, which determines the p-value and how you correctly interpret it. So if you get a p-value of 0.07 and you're saying that that is significant, 
I have a problem with you and your study, 